Okay, so I'm trying something a little bit different, a little bit new today. We'll see how it goes. Um, it should be okay uh, since I think I'm okay with technology. So welcome, guys. This is your first video uh, instruction, at least in this course. I'm certain you've done a little bit this of this previously, especially like looking up Khan Academy when you're trying to get to understand some topic that uh, was difficult for you and you needed extra information. So <clears throat> this is the first section uh, in Chapter 5. And in Chapter 5, we explore in some detail exponential functions and here's the cover page in our textbook now there are different ways that I've gone and done things in class one of the ways is to go through the examples in the text and I think I'm gonna stick to that because then the examples that I explain here will match up with those in the text and it might be more uh, synchronous um, you guys can give me feedback after a week or so and we'll see how it goes so uh, that's exponential growth and decay. And we're going to first talk today about exponential growth. So let's look at this information uh, that's provided. This, this table here is a growth of E. coli. So every 20 minutes is one of these little tick marks of one. So from zero to one, 20 minutes has gone by. So if we had 100 E. coli bacteria after 20 minutes or one 20 minute period, we now have 200. After a second 20 minute period, the 200 increases to 400. So if I had a bowl of them or a Petri dish, I'd have 100 bacteria and I set it down on the table. And then if I have, if I wait 20 minutes, I'm gonna have 200 of them. And then after I wait an additional 20 minutes, a total of 40 minutes, I will have 400 and so on. That's what this table represents. This graph is a graph of that data. So notice, because this scale is 20,000, 40,000, 60,000, so notice between 60,000 and 40,000, this spacing is exactly a unit of 20,000 in the vertical. Notice again that 40,000 to 20,000, the spacing is 20,000. And this 20,000 is the same as this 20,000. And if you look below, 20,000 to zero is also a spacing of 20,000 number of bacteria. So when I go from zero, from my, when I go from at time zero of 100 bacteria and increase to 200 bacteria and increase to 400 bacteria, increase to 600, excuse me, 800 bacteria and then 1600 bacteria, not really until I get to the 1600 do I see this dot somewhat moving away from the horizontal X axis. So that's the nature of exponential functions depending on the rate of their growth and how far we get up here and how the scale on this axis plays, you're not gonna be able to witness much difference in the first number of points. And then we'll, then we'll witness tremendous difference in the height of these points. Hmm. Okay, so if we're trying to build a mathematical model for this data and these data points being plotted, when we say mathematical model, we're talking about can we write an equation that models what's happening with this information. So here's a way to look at um, exponential functions. And I'm gonna kind of contrast that with um, linear functions. And we'll see how that goes. So here's the number of time periods again. Here's the number of E. coli bacteria. It's a portion of this table up here replicated. And what we're trying to show you here is that if I have 100, I'm going to double it. Notice how from 100 to 200, it doubles. From 200 to 400, it doubles. From 400 to 800, it doubles. So for each one of these 20-minute time periods, I'm going to double the previous amount. So what does that mean? Well, 100 equals 100 times 2 to the 0. Remember, 2 to the 0 is equal to 1, so that's 100 times 1, and I get 100. Then if I take that previous 100, and multiply it times two, I get 200. That would be doubling, right? Multiply it times two. So I'm gonna multiply it times two just one time. Then I'm gonna multiply it times two a second time when I go from 200 to 400. And so I'm gonna multiply two by two repeatedly each time that I have a new 20 minute period. This is repeated multiplication. And in comparison, a linear function A linear function is not repeated multiplication. A linear function is, as you know, y equals mx plus b 
and that let's make up an easy one y equals 2x so this looks like I'm doubling but it's not as x changes from 0 I get 0 if I go to 1 I get 2 if I go to x equals 2 I get 2 times 2 is 4 if I get x equals 3 I get 6 notice how it's not doubling if I put 4 in for x I get 8 again not doubling this is linear this is repeated addition if I write this out like this table in our equation over here it looks like this at x equals 0 I get 0 and I'm saying 0 plus 0 I'm sorry yeah 0 plus 0 if I have 1 then that's going to equal 2 but that's actually equal to 0 plus 2. Take the previous number, take the previous value and add 2. Now if I go back to well, blue, if I go to x equals 2 my result is 4. What is that from? Well it's the previous number plus an additional 2. Right? My previous number plus an additional 2. So notice how I'm just adding an additional 2. So this becomes 0 plus 2 plus 2. This is 0 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2. And I'm actually adding another 2 here, and I'm adding another 2 here. This equates to the 8, and this equates to the 6. So a linear function is repeated, repeated addition. Okay? Now, an exponential function is repeated multiplication, as you can see in the table to my left. As you can see in this table over here, it's repeated multiplication. So the first go around, it's 100 times 2. The second go around, it's 100 times 2, which is our previous value. And I'm going to take that previous value and multiply it times 2 again. The short way to write that is 100 times 2 to the 2. And then the third go around, 100 times 2 times 2 is the previous. Multiply that previous times 2 again. The shortcut way to write that is 100 times 2 to the third. So we get a function that looks like this. y equals, for this specific example, 100, that was my starting amount, times a base of 2, and my exponent is x. This is an exponential function. Okay? Now, they go through that explanation here. They've written the model here. They used n and t instead of y and x. Same difference. And then you're going to want to write this information down, this blue box. I'm going to scroll up till we get to the first example, but not the answer here. So, exponential growth function. An exponential growth function can be represented by an equation of the form y equals c times a to the x. So let me write that out, y equals c times a to the x. c is the starting amount. So remember in a linear function that b is the starting amount. It's the y, it's the y coordinate of our y-intercept. It's 0 comma b. That's the starting amount in repeated addition. Here the starting amount is the c value because when x is equal to 0, a to the 0 is equal to 1, and I will be starting out at x equals 0. I'll be starting out with y equals c. So my starting point always looks like this, 0, comma, c. All right? So that's starting value. And then the x and the y are my independent and dependent variables. And a is my base. It's also referred to as my growth factor. When we get to decay, which is the next video, it's also called the decay factor. Maybe I wanted a different color there, doofus. Not you, me. It's also called the decay factor, but that's if I'm decaying. So no matter what, it's called the factor, okay? And you'll need to remember that. All that information is here in this box as well. So notice how they say growth factor, but again, this section is just on exponential growth. 
So now let's look at the bottom of the screen and try to sort out this question here. Example one. So construct an exponential function that models 200 cells. So my starting value is 200 cells that triple every time period two. So if my, my value triples, what do you think my base would be? In other words, if I start out with C, what would I have to multiply that for it to be tripled after T time period goes by? Well, don't I have to multiply it times three to triple it? And if it was going from time zero to time one, I would have this as my T, and this would be Y. So that's a tripling function, if you want to call it that, or it's exponential growth that triples um, whatever I, whatever my starting value is and whatever that value is, whether it's 200, 700, not, whatnot, and whether it's cells or rabbits or, I don't know, <laughs> baseballs. I'm collecting lots of baseballs. I have no idea. And so they did that. N equals 200 times 3 to the T. Okay? And so my C was 200. Example 2, interpreting exponential equations. So we're just going to take a look at this equation, q equals 4 times 10 to the 6th times 2.5 to the t. So first, let me ask you, what is the, what is the starting amount? And what is my, my base or my factor? In this case, it's a growth factor, right? And we don't know what t is, what the period for t is, so we can't give anything there. We know that my independent, my independent variable is t, and my function is q of t, or my output is q of t. So those are, my points will be consisting of t comma q. So what is my, what is my starting value? Well, it's four times ten to the sixth, whatever we're talking about. Let's say, monkeys, because they make me laugh. And what is the base or growth factor? Well, that's 2.5. So what does that tell us? Well, for every t, for every t, um, you probably saw that. That's one of my students in a different class. For every t, we will be multiplying by 2.5, or a less clunky way to say it is, for every t, I'm going to have an increase of 250%, or a multiple of 2.5, something to that, to that effect. Okay? Okay. To the edge of the universe, we're going to go. Okay, so let's look at this. Um, take a piece of ordinary paper about 0.1 millimeters in thickness, and I'll start folding it in half, then in half again, and so on. By the way, if you did this for real, who cares about the thickness? If you just took a piece of paper and started folding it in half, uh, I believe you can't get past 10 folds if you can even get to 10. doesn't matter how thick the paper is when you start. doesn't matter. And it has to do with exponential growth because you're doubling the thickness each time, and so it gets super thick, and you can't fold it anymore. So if we did that, now start folding in half again, and again, and again, and again. Assume you could continue indefinitely. So let's look at part A. So example three, part A. So how would your model grow? How would the, you model the growth and thickness of the folded paper? So remember, if I had a piece of paper and I folded it, I'm going to be doubling the thickness, right? And then if I fold it again, I'm going to have this. How am I going to draw that? Uh, it's going to be like this, right? How's that? So then I'm going to double that thickness of, again in terms of how much paper is there. So um, my growth factor is going to be 2. And f is going to be the number of folds. You could use whatever value variable you want. And if I started out with 0 0.1 millimeters, 0 0.1 millimeters, and then uh, that's going to be the thickness. Okay, and that's going to be in millimeters. 
Hopefully that made sense. Part B, how many folds would it take to reach the height of a human? So what is the height of a human in millimeters? So uh, because this is in millimeters, so probably have to go here. I'm going to go, oh, that's that thing. This is not a web browser. That's a web browser. Clearly, I've been doing a whole bunch of uh, zooming. So let's do this. And then let's go. Let's say a six foot, per, let's say somebody who's six feet, six feet to millimeters. And so it's, it should pop that up right away. So let's say, I know, we probably shouldn't use six feet, maybe five, five, six or something. It would be amenable to both uh, genders, or should I say all genders. Um, so six feet equals that many millimeters. So if we're talking about a six foot person, then how would I figure that out? I'm gonna take 1828.8 equals 0 0.1 times two to the F. So I have to estimate how many folds that would be. Now, if you start plugging in values, it takes 14 folds. So they just want you to plug and check, uh, guess and check. Okay, Merry Christmas, guess and check. <laughs> okay, so guess and check and you get 14 folds, all right? So remember, let's keep the formula up there. If I have the um, thickness is equal to 0.1 times two number of folds, raised to the number of folds. And that was what they got. They put P for paper thickness. Height of the Matterhorn, they give us the height in that case, 4478 4, meters, 4478 meters, but we need to convert that into millimeters so how many millimeters? Well, that's times 10 to the 10 to the third. 10 to the third. Thousand, a thousand millimeters in a meter. Yeah. So this is how many millimeters we have times 10 to the third millimeters. Okay? That was from earlier in the semester, yes? So now we have to take... 4478.10 to the third equals 0.1 times 2 to the f divided by 0.1 and we're going to increase the number of decimal places so that's 4478 times 10 to the fourth equals 2 to the f example four doubling times uh, so doubling time is how long it takes for something to double and when i talk about doubling time it is the actual time it's Okay, so they're talking about doubling time here. Doubling time is essentially how long it takes for something to double, whether it's doubling their mass or doubling their count, like the population of deer or population of rabbits or population of people or um, number of molecules, amount of bacteria, etc. like in our very first example. The, that equation was based on doubling. So here, let's do an example of du doubling. Example four. Simple interest is calculated on the same amount, the principal, each year. Okay, so whatever amount you have in the bank, that's considered the principal. And that's going to be S in this problem. So S is my amount in savings that's going to get simple interest at 4%. And that's 4% per year, and that's why we call it simple interest. If we're going to compound that interest, we'd use a completely different formula, but this is simple interest. So make sure that you notice that this says simple interest. Okay, 4% annually, so R is 4%, which in decimal form is 0 0.04. And I start out with an initial value of $10,000. Now that's often stated as A sub zero, sometimes it's P sub zero for principal, and so that's going to be $10,000. It just depends on the problem, who wrote the problem, et cetera. So you're gonna see different things in the problems that I'm giving you. S is what we would write as our equation. And I'm gonna write this in linear form. So this is the linear version of our equation, which means we would have to do it over and over and over again. So we're gonna start out with $10,000 and we're gonna add 4% of $10,000, 0.04, 
times 10,000 times, and they're going to use the letter N for the number of years. N equals number of years. Okay? Except that's not really going to work. Oh, yeah, okay. I see what they're doing here. So, did we want to compare this equation with another equation? Okay? We're going to compare those two equations. And we're going to need the internet again. So, it says graph both functions on the same grid. What happens over time to the difference, the amount of money earned from these two types of savings accounts? So, we're going to go to Desmos. I'm going to start graphing. And I don't care about signing in. So we're going to have y equals 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, plus 0 0.04 times 10,000 times x. They're using n, but it doesn't matter. Okay? And because we're starting at 10,000, we can't see our graph. There we go. Why is this all kinds of messed up here? Because of the scale, so let's do this. No, that's fine. Okay, so there's our graph at, so we can see it intersecting at 0, 10,000 and uh, so on. All right, so that's the linear version. Here's the exponential version. Y equals 10,000 times 2 to the n. I'm sorry, 1.04 to the n. I should say x, I guess, right? There's the exponential model, okay? So if I look at that, to the left of it doesn't matter because we really, we didn't have, we can't go backwards in time, but we started out with $10,000 here and they both are at 10,100, but even just after 10 iterations, I'm gonna increase, right? And after 20, I'm quite a bit higher. After 50, it's not even close because this one's at, at 50, this one's at, 300,000, but at 50, this one's at over 700,000. So the exponential model is growing way, way faster because this isn't actually modeling what's happening. Okay, so let's do that and let's zoom in right here. I want you to see this right in here. So here they're in this at the same, they're close to the same here, but They're not going to be, all right? So let's get back to the text. So graph both functions, there they are. User graphs to estimate when your investments will double from $10,000 to $20,000 in each account, okay? So from $10,000 to $20,000 in each account. So it says use our graphs. So we gotta go back to that, take a look at the graph. And so when is it gonna go to 20,000? This one gets the 20, the exponential one gets the 20,000 at 17.68 years. So 17 and a half years, 18 years, something like that, right? This one gets to 20,000, not even yet, not even yet. It's right here. So instead of 
18 years. This one's going to take, oh, 20,000 is down here, sorry. It takes 25 years versus 17 and a half years. 20 years, I'm sorry, 25 years versus 18, 18 and a half years, or what did I say, 17 and a half years, okay? So great, great difference. Great difference. All right, go back to the text. So we did that. Oh, 10,000. Um, from 10,000, oh, how many years will it take to double from 10,000? Oh, it was 10,000. We started out with that. Use the equation for each function and check your estimates from the graphs. So we would take these two equations and put in x equals, and put in x equals 17.6 into the exponential one and put in 25, which you know is exactly correct, into the linear one. And just to double check. They just want you to do that substitution and do the math. Part D, how many years will it take for each account to double from 20,000 to 40,000? Which functions have a fixed doubling time? So this took 17.6 years. And if we look at our graphs again, we want to figure out how long it takes for it to get to 40,000. So this one is at 20,000 in 17.7 years, right? 17.6, 17.7. So in another 17.6 or 17.7, which would give us what? 17.7, 17.6 times 2, right? Because I'm going to have two of those time periods. That's going to be 35.2. So if I'm right, this should be happening right about 35.2 years. And there it is, 35.4-ish. So 35.3, whatever it is, something like that, okay? The linear one won't work that way because it's actually not doubling in a uh, consistent manner, not in an exponential manner. So 25 comma 20,000, once it get, for it to get to 40,000, I have to be out here, which is 75 years, but when I figure out the difference between those two, 75 minus 25 is it takes 50 more years to double that again. Okay, so linear model, what am I writing? Linear model goes 25 years to double and then an additional 50 years to double again. And the exponential model, it's doubling every 17.6 years, or approximately that. And so we have the answer to that, right? And that's what our graph looked like, and there's all the answers, blah, 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 okay? And so doubling time of an exponentially growing quantity is the time required for the quantity to double in size. So, um, if I have some organic material in a bowl and it rots and some mold starts to grow, that mold, since it's a since it's a living object, probably has some grows per some exponential uh, f function. Just the way things grow, the way organic material grows, it's growing at some exponential function. It may not be uh, doubling. It might it. Its growth pattern may not be exactly two times, two times, two times per year, but we can force the equation to be a doubling time equation. So we could say for every t, the exponent, it doubles. It's just that t might be 17 minutes or t might be 13.7 years. It doesn't matter. So we can make the equation function the way we want it to function. Okay, so I just want to... Looking at real growth data for E. coli bacteria. So that first graph wasn't... So this goes into what I just discussed. We can make this growth pattern anything we want, but they're talking about reality here. Looking at real growth data for E. coli bacteria, it doesn't actually, it's exponential on this portion of time, but then it flattens out. Why? Because it can't sustain itself. They call it carrying capacity. That, that colony of E. coli cannot sustain itself once it gets to a certain size. So for the first 12 time periods, for the first four hours, it looks exponential. All right, so uh, they're just pointing out that it's not exactly exponential for the whole time period, and it actually drops down and becomes what is called a logistic function. This is called a logistic function, when it grows this way and then flattens out. 
okay? Um, then we have this Explore and Extend, and then we're done, and there's your homework.